Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amar, so where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We are going to kick off tonight's proceedings with a couple of things from NVIDIA, and the first of which is actually regarding the GTX 1660. And yes, I said GTX 1660, not 1660 Ti, and no matter how much you ask me guys, I'm not going to say TI, because it's short for titanium. Okay? Anywho, what do we actually have on this one? Well, we have a very interesting report from videocards.com, who basically have got a very interesting source who has said that we're going to be seeing some MSI graphics cards from the Gaming Armor and Ventus series that are going to be GTX 1660. And there's even some pictures to go along with it, which of course I will show a few of on screen, but there's also going to be a link to their article in the description below this video. But never mind the pretty pictures, as glorious as they are, what about the specs, I hear you ask? Well, we do actually have quite a bit of information here, thanks to video cards, and according to their source, the 1660 is a TU116300 GPU, and it's going to have 1408 CUDA cores. Now, we are going to see a bit of a downgrade in terms of the memory here versus the 1660 tie, which of course has GDDR6, but we will see GDDR5 on this one, and we're also going to be seeing 6 gigabytes at play here. So, so for the reference clock speed, we are going to be seeing 1530 base and 1785 megahertz boost, but that is for the reference. Custom models are expected to be boosted up to, say, 1860 megahertz. And video card sources even went so far to, say, the price of 219 US dollars and it's going to be launching on March the 14th so if this is accurate and to be honest given that they have a very very nice collection of pictures of all of these different variants I'm going to hedge my bets and say yes it's probably accurate we're not going to have to wait all that long to find out exactly how accurate this information is. So obviously the memory is going to be the biggest factor here for a lot of people, and memory overclocking is most likely going to be very, very important. Now, Paul currently does have basically the whole touring lineup currently at his house, and he is in the process of testing the 1660 tight at the moment, so you will be seeing... Um, some videos on the 1660 tie and obviously the rest of it as well uh, quite soon not going to promise as to when because I'm not actually sure how far he's gotten in the benchmarking but um, he is working on it so it's going to be interesting to see how the 1660 does versus the 1660 tie and again we're going to find out for sure in a few days just how accurate this information is but I have yet more from Nvidia and this is actually regarding their market share and this comes to us thanks to yet another report from John Petty Research. Now, you may recall, not that long ago, actually, we had a report from them on overall GPU shipments from AMD and NVIDIA, but this report from JPR is actually covering add-in discrete graphics cards that I use on desktop and notebook segments. So, according to this report, the latest report covers the market share for the fourth quarter of 2018. Now, the main takeaway from this report that I would say is the most, well, the most key piece of information, I suppose, is that the discrete market share for NVIDIA has increased to 81.2%, and AMD's share has gone down to 18.8% again in Q4 2018. Now, also further according to this report, apparently this was one of the worst fourth quarters for AIBs in over 10 years. Now, I do have a direct quote here from Dr. John Petty, who is the president and founder of John Petty Research, and he said, quote, the channel's demand for adding boards in early 2018 was out of sync with what was happening in the market. As a result, the channel was burdened with too much inventory. This has impacted sales of discrete GPUs in Q4 and will likely be evident in Q1 and Q219 as well. The fourth quarter is normally flat to up seasonally. However, this quarter we found that ARB shipments decreased from the last quarter by 10.7%, which is below the 10-year average of a 2.3% decrease. This has largely been attributed to the hangover of the crypto mining gold rush. And that thought pretty much was crossing my mind during that entire quote, to be honest, that this is most likely, at least partially, the fault of the fact that obviously NVIDIA have a bunch of stock of Pascal cards which they ever produced during the peak of the crypto mining craze. I'm sure AMD have their own um, inventory worries as well, but we do have 
some good news from this report as during the same quarter PC shipments did see a slight increase of 1.61% and we also saw that discrete GPUs were in 27.78% of PCs down about 3% from last quarter so not too bad at all really however the overall PC market increased by one point what's at 1.61% quarter to quarter and decrease at 3.79% year to year and again we saw that decrease for desktop graphics AIB so adding boards down to that 10.75% that I've already discussed through that quote from John Petty. Now we did not see any change in tablet shipments that remained pretty steady however total sales from AIB partners still amounted with all of these woes to over 2.8 billion dollars in the fourth quarter of 2018 and again we see the market market share of 81.2% for NVIDIA and 18.8% for AMD. Now just to give a bit of a context as to how much of an increase or decrease that actually is, in the previous quarter we saw 73, sorry, 74.3% for NVIDIA and 25.7% for AMD. So a nice little boost for NVIDIA and unfortunately a bit of a sharp nosedive for AMD in their market share. So at the moment, NVIDIA is in the lead, but I don't think anyone here is really all that surprised by this because, well, obviously NVIDIA have just, in the grand scheme of things, brought out the RTX 20 series of cards. Obviously, we've since then had the 2060 release and, of course, the 1660 Tie because, obviously, when they first launched, we only had the very expensive top-end touring cards and now we have much more sort of wallet friendly I suppose you could say uh, touring cards out on the market and of course we do have the Radeon 7 from AMD but the real answer of course is going to be with Navi so the question really is whether or not Nvidia are going to be holding on to this lead now I'm sure they will still be in the lead because they have such a significant gap between themselves and their competitor however we may see them lose a chunk of it if AMD play their cards right so it's going to be very interesting to see what is actually happening in the next report of this nature that we actually discuss. And for our next topic, guess who's back again? That's right, Apple and Qualcomm as we have yet another update to their saga. So what's happening this time, you ask, as you crack out the popcorn? Well, Qualcomm are now basically saying that Apple has violated three Qualcomm patents and is seeking $31 million in damages. So, apparently, according to Qualcomm, Apple provided Intel with proprietary source code to enable the modem of Intel to catch up with the capabilities of Qualcomm's. However, they don't stop there with these allegations. They are also saying that, again, they are infringing on three patents, one allowing rapid network connection when turning a phone on, another which aids in graphics processing and conserving battery life, and another one which improves data downloads by efficiently redirecting traffic between the an app's processor and the modem itself. So how they've come up with this figure of 31 million is they have actually estimated the value of the three patents as $1.40 per iPhone so that equates to the 31 million figure roughly of how many allegedly infringing iPhones have actually been sold. Now obviously 31 million is a lot of money but this is Apple we're talking about. They were a one trillion dollar company for a while so they may or may not just cough up the damages but while it wouldn't hurt their pocketbook really it would hurt them in terms of reputation and also if they admit guilds and just cough up the money that could be used by Qualcomm to prevent the sale of iPhones because they have actually been doing that in China and Germany. Some iPhone models can no longer be sold in those countries based on other patent infringements so Apple are most likely going to fight this even though they could easily pay this without even blinking to be honest because they do not want to give Qualcomm any more ammunition to get further models banned from sale or obviously models banned in other countries or anything else really because this legal battle between the two companies is just getting increasingly bitter to be honest so it's definitely going to be interesting to see the outcome of this one. So we are going to finish that our things today with a little something about Intel. 
And this time, it's about a report from IC Insights, where they have basically said that they believe Intel is going to regain the top dog number one spot in its semi-supplier companies. Now, they did actually hold the crown for this for almost 23 years, but did lose it in 2017. Essentially, IC Insights released a report where they said they think Intel is, quote, the company that is poised to regain the number one semiconductor supplier ranking this year. Now the main challenger for this is actually going to be Samsung, but Intel have actually torn ahead of them in expected sales, and they're also going to be apparently, according to IC Insights findings, better equipped to deal with an expected drop in the memory market, which is also going to pull the overall semiconductor market down by about 7%. But again, according to their findings, Intel are apparently better equipped to handle this than Samsung are. and they are expecting Intel to have 70.6 billion in sales and Samsung to have 63.1. So that is obviously what is going to put them ahead and get them this top spot that they held for so long. If you're interested to read the full report, it is of course going to be linked in the description below this video. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see whether or not they do gain the top spot and if they do, how long they can actually hold on to it because, well, Intel have definitely faced a lot of heat over the last few years. Obviously, we have seen several missteps by them and obviously AMD have very much capitalised on it, but their woes haven't just been all of that and their 14 nm supply issues and the 10 nm delays. We have also seen ARM chips being slated to replace Intel's in Apple's Mac line in 2020 and also Microsoft's expected to bring out a new Surface product where ARM processors are going to be taking advantage of Windows 10 where x86 applications are going to be able to run in an ARM environment so they're getting new competitors enter the field which is obviously brilliant you know I've always said that competition breeds innovation and we need to have as much competition as possible because obviously we, we have seen what AMD even slightly breathing down their necks has caused Intel to do in terms of their strategies what they have released and if they've clearly been woken up from a bit of a daze I was a bit of a slumber you, you could, could argue so yeah it's definitely gonna be an interesting one to see if they manage to hold on to this if of course they manage to now be in the first place anyway that is me done for this video thank you so much for watching as always your support is highly appreciated and i'll see you next time